Hey guys, I'm Anthony Velasquez. I'm an online student, and the topic I'm going to present is Mass Electric Vehicle Transit Systems in Jacksonville, Florida. Now, I grew up in Florida, and I've seen it grow as a city. We keep getting new roads, wider roads, more construction, and it's just causing more cars to be put into the roads and more CO2 to be emitted into the atmosphere. Now, Jacksonville is actually ranked 8th in longest daily vehicle miles per capita, 28.3 for urbanized areas. Now this number is important because this number needs to be reduced because the higher it is, the more likely there will be health risks for the population in general. And it also shows that there's just more people driving. Now that number is um, computed by getting the total number of vehicles traveled in miles divided by the total population. Now here you see an aerial image of Jacksonville, Florida. It's actually the largest city and landmass in the continental U.S. And it's not uncommon for someone to be driving from one side of the city to the other for work. And it's also not uncommon for those people to be just one person in each car. And we do have a bus system, but it's not full encompassing of the city. And actually, we have something called the Jacksonville Transportation Authority um, Skyway Electric Train System, which is located only in downtown and that's uh, something we want to expand. Here is a map of the bus system we have in Jacksonville. As you can see, it's pretty robust, but it's still missing some parts in these gray areas. So we definitely want to make all these buses electric, um, get rid of all the diesel, and just add new bus stations. Luckily, the JTA Skyway Association has already been planning on expanding their Skyway system. As you can see on the image that they have plans to expand it all across the city. We can definitely play off these uh, or expand on these routes, add new stops and make all of it electric. And this will help decrease the amount of vehicles traveled and decrease the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. Some challenges of implementing this is going to be the large initial cost compared to the long term gain. And we need to get a vote on this because it will raise taxes for a few years. And lastly, electric vehicles are still considered a new technology and some people are still afraid. So there's a lot of education to be um, given. We as Floridians really need to value our environment, our ecosystem in Florida, because it's unique in all the United States. So reducing the CO2 level is a social good. It helps the environment, but it also helps us. Our health is going to be improved when there's less pollution in the atmosphere. Also, Jacksonville as a city has tons, thousands of metric tons of CO2 emitted every day of vehicles, and we want to reduce that number. Moving on to the iPad equation, we have impact, which is the total CO2 emitted from vehicles, the population, which is the number of people living in Jacksonville, affluence, which is what we're trying to change, vehicle miles driven per capita, which is the total miles vehicle travel in Jacksonville divided by the population. And lastly, the technology, which is CO2 emitted per mile driven, which is 404 grams per mile. And you're going to see that this is going to add up a lot in the next slide. You can see from the numbers given from the previous slide that the total impact for 2010 is going to be 9,412 metric tons of CO2. That's a ton of CO2, and we want to try to at least stay at that level in the 2040 range or even better reduce the number of co2 now for the 2040 we have about a million people living in jacksonville and we want to decrease our affluence to 20 vehicle miles traveled per capita to have a total of 8660 metric tons of co2 an eight percent reduction for a life cycle analysis we have diesel bus life which has a lower initial cost compared to electric also for now a longer lifespan but it still has the hazards of uh, co2 emitted to the atmosphere electric buses have a higher initial cost because of the batteries and also the fact that the batteries don't last as long both of those things are actually getting way better as technology increases over time diesel buses cost about four hundred fifty thousand dollars to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in their lifespan, also $39,000 in fuel. But you also have maintenance and there's always negative impacts of the environment, which also affects the health and increases hospital bills. On the other hand, electric buses cost about $300,000 more 
than the same size diesel bus with the, the added benefit of no cost for fuel and there's no moving parts in the engine, it's just a battery, so the maintenance cost is low. At some point in the future, it's going to be more beneficial to get electric buses economically. And that's it for the presentation, guys. Thank you for listening.